In this video, I want to uh, demonstrate to you how to do the homework problems uh, for the Unit 3 assignment that you were given. And I'm going to do that by looking at some examples in the text. This is at the back of Chapter 9. These are questions that are there in the, in the back. I think it's uh, numbers 21 and 22. And it asks you to um, construct the order of uh, genes on a chromosomal uh, DNA based on an experiment. And in this case, it's an experiment done by Austin Taylor and uh, Edward Alberg. And what they've done is they've crossed HFR cells that contain these genes, these wild-type genes, with an F-minus strain. Remember, an F-minus strain does not contain the F factor and therefore cannot initiate conjugation. And they have these genes. They've been modified to have these genes. Now, it's real easy to uh, get bogged down in the name of these genes and try to keep track of them. What you need to know is that the reason for these different uh, the differences in genes is that they have to be able to detect when a gene from the HFR strain, one of these, shows up in the uh, F minus strain through recombination and conjugation. And uh, it's done by growing on different media. And uh, whenever these different genes show up, they will uh, those the F negative strains will start growing on certain media based on which genes showed up. Okay, well, that's again, please review that in your textbook if you're having some trouble with that. But don't get bogged down in the names too much. Instead, uh, uh, keep in mind that what's happening is that if we look down here at the graph, that what they've done is they've added the HFR strain to the F minus strain. Now the F minus strain lacks an F factor, lacks, it lacks the HFR um, gene uh, in the incorporated in the genome of the bacterium, and so they cannot initiate uh, a conjugation. But when they put the HFR strain in, the HFR strain can initiate conjugation. So they put them together, and um, the HFR strain will initiate conjugation with the F negative strain. It takes about 100 minutes or so, and that's why you have a, a 0 to 100 minutes here on this x-axis, about 100 minutes for the entire genome of the HFR bacterium to be replicated and, and sent over to the F minus strain. Uh, and so what they're doing is they're putting them together, but ever so often they are, and usually pretty frequently, every five minutes or so, they're taking out a fraction, probably every minute or so, taking out a fraction of that conjugating population and they're taking them out, stopping the conjugation process, and they're checking to see which genes are now in the F minus strain that would be there as a result of conjugation. Uh, and, and what they find is that after about 22 minutes or so here, they're seeing this mal plus gene. Okay, this mal plus gene must be pretty close to the origination center of of a replication because it's showing up quickly. Remember, it doesn't take very long to move this mal into the uh, new F the negative strain. But it takes about 20 or 30 minutes here for the XYL plus strain, and about 32, 33 minutes for the MTL plus strain, and about 42 minutes for the MET plus strain. What does that mean? It means then that essentially I've got an order of the genes that are on that chromosome, because once the HFR strain starts to replicate, it replicates this one, the mal plus first, the XYL plus second, and so on. And that's why it shows up at different times uh, uh, sooner for mal plus and uh, much longer for MET plus, because MET plus is the last gene to be replicated. So they're, they're, by disrupting these populations, they can see which ones of these genes show up first in uh, the F minus strain. So basically, I've got an order in which the uh, genes are in the bacterial genome. So I want to map that, and I've drawn a circle with some dashes here. Now, uh, this is kind of represents the uh, bacterial genome, and you've just got, I've just got some dashes for the different genes I'm looking at. I put a question mark here, too, because remember, this is a large, um, fairly large uh, uh, genome, and of course, we're not mapping all genes or anything. We're just mapping certain ones. So we're only going to focus on these dashes here. And starting at the top here next to the question mark, we'll put our first gene and go to the second, third, and fourth in order. And this graph simply shows us that order. So we're going to put MAL plus first here and then so on. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and, and show you how to do this in, in, in Microsoft Office. It's pretty easy. I'm going to insert, insert a text box. I could choose any one of these. I'm going to choose this. It looks, it looks like kind of unwieldy at first. I'm going to move over here. 
And um, I'm going to delete this text. I'm going to highlight it. I'm just start typing. It'll type over it. So it's MAL plus. Now I can also go and I can highlight this plus and I can go to home and be fancy and make a, sub, a superscript. And then I'm going to go ahead and highlight this table again, move it in place. Now it looks doesn't look that great because it got this big box around it. Well, I can do a couple of things. I can shorten this box. I can also get rid of this box around it. For instance, if I double click on the table, you'll see up here in the menu, I have other options. I can go to the fill or first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the outline. I'm going to get rid of the outline. You see, I no longer have a box, but you notice also if I move this box around, for instance, if I move it there, it just sits on top of everything. Well, one of the things I can do to make for just for formatting purposes, you don't have to do this, but it's a nice little thing. Go to the shape fill and the fill, put no fill and it'll get rid of the fill inside of it. All right. I'm also going to just make this a little fancier just for the heck of it. I'm going to make it red text and I'm going to bold it so it stands out a little bit. And there I go. Now, fortunately, Microsoft Word is good about this. I can highlight the box. I can hit control C or I can right click on it and and you'll see I can copy. I can copy. Then I can go here and I can paste. Now I'm going to have to move it down here. And it kept the format of, of what I had before. So I can just type this in. This is the next gene. And I'm going to hit Control V again because I've got it in clip on the clipboard. I'm going to move this over here. Let's see, this was MTL. And finally, I'm going to put this over here. And this last one was, I think, MET, yes. Okay, and I've got my genes label, and they are in order, uh, as they should be on this gene. Now, I also can indicate for this particular one, I don't have to do that in this, this case, but we're going to see we're going to have to do this in the next example. I can also add arrows to indicate the direction of the replication. In this case, just by convention, we'll start at one location, go one case and go clockwise. But when we have multiple FR genes, we could be going in the opposite direction, as I will explain in the next example. But I can also insert, for instance, a shape. I'm going to insert an arrow. I'm just going to insert the arrow showing this way. And I can format this arrow too. I can right left click on it. I can go over here and make it thicker. I, now I've got a nice little arrow for the direction of replication. I also want to add in, it tells you, for instance, in this example, to add the minimum distance between them. Remember the time acts as a map unit. So that we're looking for the time difference between these. I'm going to go back to the graph. The time difference between these. So MAL plus showed up at 22 minutes or so. <clears throat> XYL showed up about 30 minutes. So that's about eight minutes apart. So that's about eight map units. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to copy one of these boxes that I already have. I'm going to put it inside of this. I'm going to change this to eight. So that represents a map unit. And now I can put this eight kind of right here so that you can see how the distance uh, between MAL and XYL. And then if you look up here, XYL and MTL is maybe, maybe two units apart at most. And again, I will go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and do my paste and copy. So I'm not, it's not looking, uh, you know, the, the, the bacteria phase or the genome that I've drawn is not exactly the scale. Uh, that's fine. But just as long as I have the numbers properly represented here. And so from MTL and MET, yeah, that's probably, it looks like from about 32 to 42, about 10 uh, of, or so apart. So, I'm, so now I've got my um, uh, genes in the right order and the distances between them representing the relative distances they are apart actually on the genome. All right. Let's go to the second example, and here's a case where we have uh, three different HFR donor strains have been used, and essentially you've got information for three different HFR genes. Now we're still looking at the same um, genome for E. coli, but three different experiments have been performed in, in basically three different graphs. Now the graphs are not shown, but the times between them are shown here. So essentially it's just like having the graph up here and I can in calculating the times here between the different ones. So I can see that, for instance, that HFR1 shows genes B+, plus, D+, plus, C+, plus, F+, plus, and G+. Plus. Uh, the B+, plus shows up at three minutes. 
then d plus at five minutes, and so on. So I can see that's the order for that particular one. Now, at HFR2, we see this order, E, F, C, D, and B with these numbers, and I can see HFR3 with these, these orders. Now, what I would do in this case is I would start with one of them. I'm just going to pick the very first one, and I'm going to start mapping it on my genome. And uh, the way to do that is simply start, and I'm going to label, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add a text box here. And this may be of, sorry, I kind of moved down quickly. Uh, I'm going to label it actually as HFR1 um, because I want to keep track of my uh, different uh, uh, genes, but I'm going to label it as B+. And there I have it. Now, um, and so B plus, then I, and, and that labeling here also indicates this is kind of where it started. And uh, also I want to draw an arrow for HFR1 because I'm going in this, in this clockwise direction. So I'm going to go ahead and insert an arrow. For HFR1. I'll just leave it blue for now because it's not that important, but I'll move it down a little bit so that it's, there we go. Okay, and then of course the next thing is um, uh, we see B, then D, C, F, and G. So D, C, F, and G. So I'm going to move these up here. D plus. I'm not going to worry about the capitals and, 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 uh, should be a lowercase, but just for time's sake, I'm not going to worry about that for now. And I think it was C, F, and G. That's right. C. I'll paste again. F. And do G quickly. Okay, so based on HFR1, this is my sequence for uh, these genes. Now, if I go up to HFR2, remember this is a different uh, uh, HFR fragment, but the genes should be in the same order. That is on the whole genome. So, but this fragment, this HFR FR fragment, may be in a different location on the gene. So it's showing E, F, C, D, and B as the order. Well, let's look uh, to see where that works. And uh, so it's not showing G at all, and it maybe just that's not in it. But if I look at where I see similarities, I see F, C, D, and B, F, C, D, and B in the opposite direction. So what this means is that um, I can put E. here. Okay, but this is HFR2, and it's E plus. But you'll notice that it's going in the opposite direction. Now, of course, it doesn't have the G in it, but it has the other ones, and it's going the opposite direction. So I'm going to indicate that. I'm going to, I'm going to control C and control V this. Because remember, these can be on these, these can cause transcription to happen in, in different directions. But this is how I'm piecing this together. This is how I'm piecing this, uh, and I can, and the C, of course, of this HFR F3 is uh, in agreement with this overall order. So HFR3 is D, C, F, E, G. Well, D, C, F, but see, we have a problem here. I put the E here because the first two, I, I didn't, ne couldn't necessarily determine if E was here or here, but this last one tells me that I have the order slightly wrong. That in honest, all honesty, it should be swapped. So I'm going to move it. It's one of the beauties of doing this and being able to just move things around. I'm going to move my arrow down too because it starts here and it's going in the opposite direction. But one of so if I go down here HFR three now it's going D C and it's starting here. So I'm going to label. I'm going to go ahead and add uh, my HFR three HFR three. And, uh, and it's going also in the same direction as HFR1. So 
So you can see from those three data, I was able to determine the correct genome sequence in the bacteria. And I can see that this HFR1 code is, is going in this direction, that that's the direction in which it is uh, uh, um, replicating the DNA. And HFR3 is replicating it this way too, but HFR2 is going the opposite direction. But I can make them all work together to get the correct sequence of genes on this bacteria phase, or this, bac not by phase, but the bacteria. So this E. coli, the, the uh, uh, correct order of genes on this bacterium is B, D, C, F, E, and G uh, in that order. So that's how you do this, is how you use multiple data. The um, home, the, the, the unit assignment that you have this time uses both these kinds of problems in it, and it's kind of a, a one big problem, but that this is how you're able to uh, uh, interpret that data and indicate it on a, a graph like this or a, a drawing like this. And so hopefully this will help you to utilize Microsoft Word to uh, finish this assignment.